All right, so you clicked on the video, you're obviously curious about the title. Before we get into this, just leave a comment letting me know what you think these six layers or six planes are. Now, if you manage to click this without reading the title, very impressive. The video is going to be about the six layers above lucid dreaming. So if you think of it as like ascending in consciousness, there are six layers or probably more, right? I'm just going to talk about six in this video above lucid dreaming, each one becoming more conscious, not less conscious. And this is something which, which a lot of people get wrong when they think about dreaming, you assume, oh, you, you, you're descending in consciousness. You're less conscious when you're dreaming. But it's actually the opposite. You, being awake is the least conscious. And then as you go to dreaming, slightly more conscious, lucid dreaming, more, and so on and so on, until you eventually get to pure consciousness or awareness, which most people never experience. Maybe some monks might experience this on like in uh, the physical lifetime on Earth, but most people don't. Most people stay in the first two to four layers, the vast majority being not even lucid in their dreams, let alone their life and so on. If you're skeptical about this, that's fine, I understand. At least listen out of curiosity. Try it out, research it yourself, and then, and only then, make a decision. Don't just assume, ah, oh, it's talking about more spiritual stuff again, must be nonsense. The first layer, this is really split into two layers, I guess, because you have people who aren't in autopilot mode. So the first layer is waking life. This is before we get to lucid dreaming. I'll get to lucid dreaming in a second. Waking life. And within waking life, you have two types of people. You have the autopilot people who don't really think about what they're doing. They're not really aware that technically they're conscious, but they're not really, you know, their, their brain and higher consciousness is not really activated. They're just going through life on autopilot, doing things because they assume they should do them, because they were told to do them, not questioning things, autopilot. And then you have normal everyday living for most people now, I would say, certainly becoming most people, people who are conscious, who are aware of what they're doing and why they're doing it, making decisions, creating their own reality, taking responsibility for their health, for their wellness, for their emotional well-being. So two, two types of people in the awake stage. Above that, you have dreaming. And as you know, dreaming is where your subconscious comes out, you get messages, signs, synchronicities and ideas all come bubbling through your subconscious. And then above that, you have lucid dreaming. I don't need to explain what that one is. Really, it's just becoming aware of the dreams and placing yourself in that, in that narrative so that you're the avatar. Instead of being the observer, you now become the participant. You can now interact and decide what to do, where to go. You can interact almost directly with yourself and with various characters in the dream. Above that, we have lucid living. And really, this is kind of the same as you know the first one I said but lucid living is really about being very aware in your everyday life and your lucid life so there's really no gap there's no distinction as such between your waking life and your lucid life because they're one continuous flow of consciousness it's not like you only wake up when you become lucid it's really just one system where you're consciously aware constantly this is very difficult to achieve and most people never have this, but it is certainly possible and it, I would place that above lucid dreaming. Then you have your soul connection slash purpose. This applies not only to the lucid state, but also to when you're awake. And this is describing a connection between you or what you think is you, it's not really you, your, your physical body avatar and your higher self and your soul. Most people, this connection is very weak, uh, almost to the point of being non-existent. In fact, a lot of people don't even believe they have a soul or a higher self. And they believe that this physical body is all there is, and this life is everything. When you die, that's it, lights out, there's nothing else. So again, if you are at the stage yourself, congratulate yourself because most people are not. Uh, most people, it's becoming more now, but most people are far below this. They have, not, not to say that they're wrong, you know, or that they should be ridiculed or anything like that. No, no, of course not. They're all, every person is on their own journey, but they are certainly lower on the scale of consciousness in terms of how conscious you are, how connected to your higher purpose and higher self you are. 
of course, if you don't even believe you have a higher self, <laughs> it, you're, you, you can't be as connected as somebody who does believe that. So that's where you start having a strong sense of purpose. You're here for a reason in this lifetime, in this body, in the specific location you're in now, that's all happening for a reason. And then in this stage, in this layer, you're hopefully aware of what that purpose is, or you at least have some idea. The next stage above purpose or soul connection is more of a oversight. You're becoming more like the observer of your avatar instead of identifying as your avatar. When I say avatar, I mean your physical body slash mind. Even the mind is not really where your consciousness resides. It's simply a tool, you know, uh, a useful tool that you can use to control and guide your body. Oversight is really where you become aware of your emotions, your triggers, your conditioning, your past, your everything really within your body-mind complex. You become aware of that, almost like you're seeing yourself from above and this is, can really best be described as becoming lucid in waking life to the point where you can, you can notice yourself about to react to a certain thing and you can, you can stop yourself and say, hold on, we've done that before. That's a pattern, you know, we, we normally react angrily to that because of so-and-so that happened in my past. So let's stop that. Let's actually decide not to react in that way. You see, this is like you're, instead of being in the fight or flight I don't want to say victim mindset, but instead of being in that scenario where you're reacting, yeah, that's a good word. You're instead of be, being reactionary, you're more deciding how to react, or if you want to react at all. And this is why I've labelled this one oversight. You're you're kind of like above that reactionary state. You can decide how to feel. You know how your emotions react to certain things, and you know how to make yourself feel good, and you know what makes you feel bad, and you you have a decision a choice in that process. Many people don't, and that's, in in many ways, that's uh, a very scary way to live when you're just completely at the mercy of your emotions and what happens to you. There's no control there. You have no grip, as it were, on reality. You have no grounding. Level above that, manifestation. At this level, you not only have oversight, you not only know your purpose, your power, you know thoughts create things, but at this level, you're actually able to manifest things. You're able to decide that you want something. And it could be something physical. More often it's an experience or a situation though, uh, or a person or a connection. You decide something, you decide you want it, and then you make the decision to have that come to you. Not many people get to this point. And the people who do will seem like this crazy, amazing, lucky person who seems to have everything just flow towards them. Well, it's not really luck. You know, they're just at the conscious level where they can manifest things. It's not an accident, it's not a coincidence. Above that, so this is now probably number six or seven, is we have astral projection. This is what most people will never experience, or at least haven't experienced uh, so far. They will, because we're now, without saying too much, we're, we're heading more now into a period of history and a location in the galaxy where higher consciousness is being activated. Anyway, so we have astral projection and OBEs. Now this is something which you can glimpse from the lower levels. You can actually glimpse astral projection from a lucid dream, but you can't, for the most part, you can't consciously induce astral projection uh, until you're actually at that level. There are more, of course, I could go on, but that's the main ones. Let me know what you think. and. I'm really actually quite curious if you've experienced any of these yourself. I haven't asked that question before. Maybe I'll make a poll or something. Anyway, leave a comment down below. See you next time.